everybody Ann here sitting inside the tiny house having my coffee you can probably hear I've got the fans going in the background and so far the solar I've got it hooked up to the inside battery because it's gonna um, last longer and I've got the refrigerator running and the fan and luckily it's really sunny outside today so I can do that both at the same time so I'm able to sit inside the tiny house and enjoy things with moving air which is good because right now the bugs outside are so awful. I just try and stay away from them if I can. So today I'm gonna try and make some more bug spray. I don't know if I'll show you that because boring. <laughs> so who knows, who knows what I'm gonna get done today. Um, it's gonna get up to 94, but it's gonna feel like it's like 105. So, um, oh, and I did wanna mention something too. A lot of you had mentioned the evaporative coolers and um, I've had them before and unfortunately they don't work in humid client climates they just don't um, because they are basically swamp coolers um, even the ones that you build out of an ice chest put ice in it put fans and um, and it doesn't work out in humid uh, human environments because um, it just puts more moisture into the air and it makes you feel more miserable you're better off just not including the water and just using the fan and letting it blow directly on you and letting the water, <laughs> you know, the sweat evaporate off your body and that's how you can get cool. So anyhow, the fan is working great. Um, it says that it's 93, 94, but it's tolerable in here. I'm still sweating a little bit, but I got my hair pulled back. Um, and it's actually nicer being inside the tiny house than outside because it's just so hot and the air is dead there's not a breeze in the air oh my gosh so maybe the Lord will bless me with more rain today if not I'm gonna have to uh, water my plants it's already too hot to start watering them now so I'll have to wait till the Sun starts going down I've had to move some plants around hopefully to try and save them so um, I'll just show you a few things and call it a day I've been drying out some herbs. I've got some basil, some oregano. Oh yeah, be nice or get out. Some peppermint and some more oregano. I like it hanging off that rack. Made me some lovely bacon, lettuce, and tomato sliders with my own tomatoes and my own lettuce that I grew in that weird canister. This is going to be delicious. Torch has a huge bug. It even piqued Papa's interest. Turn around, let us see it. It was making a big buzzing sound. I have no idea what it is. Can you see that, guys? What is it? <laughs> I think he's getting it. Whoa! Good job, dude! I've moved all these pepper plants over here. They're not in the shade right now. That's okay, they need a little bit of sun, but before too long, this whole strip out to about right here is gonna be shaded. So hopefully these will kind of bounce back a little bit. See, that one's in the shade, it looks better. Um, all of these banana peppers are getting just kind of burnt, you know, um, including some of the jalapeno peppers. Cayennes are doing okay. Look at all those cayenne peppers. My goodness, this is going to be a good harvest this year for cayenne. So in about another hour, this is going to be pretty much shaded. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that that'll work better. I've also kind of moved these a little bit closer this way because also this little strip to about right here is going to be in the shade pretty soon here. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that these grow better. But look at this, look at the different way these peppers grow. These yellow ones, am I filming this right? Yeah, these yellow ones grow up and the green ones grow down. So weird, look at, look at, it's getting bigger, won't be long. And then I got another nice yellow one here and yeah, it's growing up from the stem. Sorry, I'm moving it around so much. Look at that, pretty weird. So, hopefully these tomato plants will do better. I got a few tomatoes on them. Um, these are cherry tomatoes. <sighs> I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that I'll at least get a little bit of a harvest out of this garden this year. And all these tomato plants are just doing horrible. Um, 
I'm not totally giving up on them, but I'm not going to move them because then I'd have to take them out of the fence. Uh, I'm getting a few tomatoes, but I'm getting, I don't know if you can see that underneath. Sorry. Oh, well, just take my word for it. It looks like blossom end rot. I think that's a calcium deficiency, so I'm going to try fertilizing them and see if that helps. I got a few beans I can harvest, but then I'm going to probably pull all of these plants except for this one um, and these cucumbers. I know I said I was going to pull them before. I haven't pulled them yet, but I will. But look at that one down there. It's got, it's got a little bit that's trying to come back. The squash is sprawling. Um, I've had a couple fruits show up, but then they drop off. I, I don't know if it's just because of the heat. I've been watering. There's actually, I don't know if you can see it, it's like right in this area. There's a fruit down there. Um, and these beans over here are doing pretty good. <sighs> Maybe I'll get something. What are you doing, little chicken, all by yourself? I hear you chirping for your buddies. They can't be too far away. Oh, and over here, you guys, I have put, I don't know if they'll come out because they're all in the shade right now, but not only are olive, rocky, and splash in there, splash and olive are right next to each other, but I also put in Raven. Um, she ended up just running into the coop one day when the neighborhood kids were here and their dogs were here. So um, they seem to be much, much happier all back together again. And Raven, she's not out roaming by herself, so she's got her buddies. It's 2 p.m., so let's see. Oh, good, we've got three eggs. Bottom one is Coco's. Top right is Miss Pris. And top left is Roxy. <laughs> you can tell by the shape and the color. Miss Pris is catching up in size, and eventually her eggs will get darker as well. <sighs> Sitting in the shade on my porch. I did manage to do some stuff with the compost heap, composting, toilet, and whatnot. Whatnot. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I have made a decision. I am going to start using some of my chickens for meat. Yup, meat birds. Not the established flocks, definitely not. Romeo. But I'm reconsidering Rocky. <laughs> nah, not Rocky. He's too beautiful. Um, not Olive, not Splash, not Raven, not, you know, Miss Pris or Coco or um, Roxy. Um, not Romeo, but the other black Asian birds, if they get big enough, yep, I'm going to start finding a way <laughs> to harvest them. Um, I didn't think I could harvest chickens, but Lena from Red Road Homestead just did a bunch and, um, she didn't show her on camera, of course, you don't want to show that sort of stuff on camera, but she knows how to do it. Um, I know another couple other people who know how to do it. So I need to learn how to do it. So the birds that I'm going to use for meat, I'm not going to give names. I'm not going to show them on camera so that you guys don't get attached to them. Um, and of course, if Miss Pris <laughs> broods out another batch of chickens, I will start using all of those as meat birds too because I've got enough hens right now between the Easter eggers, our Roxy, Miss Pris, and um, Coco. And then once Olive and Splash and Raven start laying, I'm going to have too many eggs. And I'm going to have more than I can use. And really, you're not going to make, I'm not going to make a lot of money selling eggs. Um, I'd rather just give them to my neighbors, you know. I mean, we barter. Yeah, we barter. So that's good. Um, so I'm going to start raising some of these birds, some of these chickens for meat because I love chicken. So I'm just going to have to get past the initial ew grossness. Um, I still don't know if I could kill a chicken. So I may have to have somebody else come and do the killing. Um, I don't know about plucking the feathers. I know there's feather pluckers. Uh, there's just so much that goes into it. But I think I could clean one. I could clean one. I could take the innards out and do that kind of stuff. So, you know, just baby steps. You know, if I can gut a fish, certainly I can process other kinds of meat. So I hope you guys don't hate me for it. But I, I'm thinking, you know, I've got all these chickens and I've not used my incubator, not one single time. And Miss Pris keeps ha hatching out more chicks. 
So I think that's what I, I'm going to do in the future. Of course, none of them will be ready for months anyhow. Um, but I think it's just a smart thing to do. And if I don't have to buy additional chickens, if I can just use the ones that hopefully Miss Pris will hatch out, or maybe if I hatch out in the incubator and just keep them, you know, out of the limelight, um, I think it's a wise decision. If I can provide myself with my own fresh meat, I think that's a good thing. So anyhow, that's all I got for you guys today. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.